talking Better space. We're talking time. baseball. <laughs> We're not talking space balls, though. Remember that no, old no, movie? Not yeah, that. no, not talking about that here this morning. Good morning to you, everyone. Uh, Welcome to your Thursday, 6 a.m. here. I'm Eric Connert. And I'm not at you, Rob Port. Yeah, that's a way to wake up right there. <laughs> space, baseball, millions of dollars yeah. uh, going to a Padre. We can all dream, this right? Is so exciting. Yeah, it is an exciting day. So glad you're with us. Let's send it over to Evan where we can also brag about how beautiful it is. I mean, look, look at that. that. I just, I feel the urge to always just step aside and be like, soak it in, guys. Look I at mean, this. we like your smile and all. Thank yeah. you. But. Thank you very much. I know. I know it's better when the forecast is great. Yes. It complements it, but I try to keep the smile going year round. Uh, here's the view out at Hotel Dell as we start off your Thursday morning, one day shy of Friday. I also love that really got Netta up this morning, that music. So I love it. We got a lot of energy as we start off the day. Uh, temperatures across the board are a little bit chilly in some cases, mostly in the 40s. We've even seen some pockets of 30 degree temperatures out there, so keep that in mind. You may want to keep a jacket on hand, but by the afternoon, we're really warming up. 60s and 70s are in the mix. We have an even stronger warming trend on the way, but in just a bit, we'll talk about the breeze that's coming through already, a wind advisory that's in effect, and then we'll also talk about that warming trend. A lot to get to in the weather department. Jenny, did you know today is a holiday? I actually just got a notification on my phone. It's National Drink Wine Day. Oh, yeah, oh. and I figured you and I both celebrate, right? Well, hey, let me throw this and get out of here <laughs> because it's no. No, I'll do a quick traffic for you. Well, thank you for letting us know. This is the news that we need, Evan, and it's exactly. very much Exactly, that's the pertinent news on our Thursday. <laughs> yeah, it is. Your travel times are fine, by the way. There are no major crashes reported. Oh, look, and that disappeared, too, so I literally have nothing. Bernardo Drive, there were, like, wood pallets in the road blocking the northbound 15 slow lane, but as you just saw, they disappeared. Back to you. All right, Jenny, thank you. This morning, another potential setback for the local COVID-19 vaccine distribution. The winter storm blinking in much of the country, having an impact on shipments that are coming our way. Yes, yeah, freezing in lots of the country. Yeah. So San Diego is certainly being impacted, and it's changing appointment plans. News, 8, Al News 8's Allison Royal joining us live outside Balboa Municipal Gym to explain what's happening there now. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Well, Evan said it well. There is definitely great weather to brag about in San Diego, but I cannot say the same for other parts of the country. So here at Balboa Park at the Balboa Municipal Gym, COVID-19 vaccination appointments have been canceled for the day. The San Diego Fire Rescue Department made the announcement on social media last night. So that means that if you have an appointment, it will be rescheduled once those vaccines arrive here in San Diego County. So beautiful sunny weather in February in San Diego. Well, not sunny right now because it's six o'clock in the morning, but snowy in many other parts of the country, and that is having a domino effect here in San Diego County. This means that it is delaying shipment of the COVID-19 vaccine from other parts of the country. You have probably seen that snowy footage of less than ideal driving conditions. I'm talking snow, ice, low visibility, high winds, and those low temperatures. Now, County Supervisor Nathan Fletcher said during Wednesday's week weekly COVID-19 update that vaccine doses from both Pfizer and Moderna are being held up due to this severe weather storm. Moderna's primary manufacturing facility is in Michigan and Pfizer's is in Massachusetts. Uh, both of those along with the routes from there to here have been impacted uh, by the snow and the weather conditions we're seeing across the country. Uh, and so this uh, is going to impact our ability to administer vaccines uh, this week. And of course, winter in Massachusetts and Michigan and winter in San Diego are different stories. So if you had a COVID-19 vaccination appointment today here at Balboa Park, you will find out if it was canceled on your email. So check your email. That is also how you're going to find out how to reschedule your appointment once those vaccine shipments arrive here in San Diego County. Erica Netta. Allison, thanks for that update. And here's how the county vaccine distribution numbers are breaking down. More than 663,000 doses have been given to people. That's according to the latest numbers. And that means 17.6% of people here in San Diego County have received one shot. 5% have been given both doses. And as of now, more than 86% of the doses that San Diego has received have been administered. And the county is seeing under 700 new coronavirus cases for a third day in a row. Health officials are reporting 500. 39 new cases. However, 57 additional deaths are being reported. Hospitalizations do continue their downward trend along with ICU bed use. Governor Gavin Newsom and state lawmakers have finalized a $9.6 billion COVID relief package. It includes a 
one-time $600 payment for Californians making under $30,000. More than $400 million in funds will help pay for child care for families meeting certain income requirements, providing $525 per child. There's also $2 billion in grants available for small businesses. And this morning, San Diego's in the national spotlight. So let's get to this big update. Our Padres are breaking the bank once again, and this time it's for this very special man right here, Fernando Tatis Jr. Yeah, get used <laughs> to seeing him in a Friars uniform for a long time. And News 8's Chris Grow joining us live from Petco Park with how this is such a big deal in so many ways. We're going to be seeing that uh, bat toss for many years to come here. <laughs> For, for many, many, many more years and hopefully many more times a year, right? Fernando Tatis Jr., 14 years, $340 million. That is the lead of this story. But when you start getting into some of the details, you start to realize exactly why this is such a big deal, this contract extension. Let's start off with the fact that he's 22 years old. This is a move the Padres didn't need to make. In fact, they're losing out on a lot of years where they could have had Fernando Tatis on their team at a much cheaper rate, but instead they decided to get him at this contract extension, probably a sign of their commitment to their star shortstop. And as for Fernando Tatis Jr., if you get an offer of $340 million, I'm sure your agent will tell you to take it and take it to the bank. But here's the other crazy thing about this deal. At $340 million, the total deal of the, the the actual life of the deal not even the largest in MLB right now it's actually the third largest deal and if you do it per year he's not even the highest paid player salary wise on the Padres that still goes to Manny Machado who signed that 10 year 300 million dollar deal so the Padres are banking on the fact that they are eventually going to be having a deal a saving so to speak on this young superstar uh, and look a lot of people wondering where the Padres are getting this money well, Harold Reynolds of the MLB Network has a good theory. The other thing I'll throw back at you on this is a lot of people are talking about where are the Padres getting all this money? You think about it, Eric Hosmer, Manny Machado, and now you get Tatis, not to mention the other trades and moves that they've made to bring people on. And I looked at it this way. When the San Diego Chargers left to become the Los Angeles Chargers, what was left in town for the big money? The Padres, they're the biggest pro sport and only pro team in that area. And look, 14 years with Tatis Jr. now going up until 2035. Very likely he's going to be spending his entire career here as a Padre. Of course, though, uh, we are seeing guys playing well into their late 30s and maybe even early 40s. So there might be another deal done, but this is likely going to be his peak deal here again, $340 million. Eric Netta. Yeah, he's an electrifying player. Yeah, Dad, third richest around. baseball player yeah, now, right? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Biggest deal. Thanks, Chris. Coming up here in Once just a few minutes. Once all the minutes. money comes in. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Coming up here in just a few minutes, we're going to have live reaction from former Padres closer Heath Bell. Looking forward to that interview. We are turning now, though, to the crisis in Texas. People not only dealing with long-lasting blackouts here, many are under a boil water advisory as treatment plants are facing power problems. Frozen pipes are bursting, flooding homes and businesses. People are crowding grocery stores and looking for firewood to stay warm. Meantime, the National Weather Service warns another major winter storm is heading for the southeast and then on to the mid-Atlantic states and up into the northeast. So, so much for this area. Ooh, yeah, you feel impacted. so bad. And so many friends right now are saying they don't have water still. They're wanting to go to the grocery store to get water. But obviously, you see those lines are running out of that. So, uh, you know, it's terrible what they're dealing with. It's pretty dangerous. But hopefully, warm weather is on its way by this weekend. Uh, things should start melting slowly but surely yeah some of those folks Evan may be booking tickets here to San Diego as we speak <laughs> right. that makes sense right I mean hey this is what we see for our afternoon high temperatures 60s and 70s I feel like we have to be a little bit guilty for just how nice it is but like we talk about I mean this is the trend across San Diego we're roughly in line with average for our afternoon high temperatures even in this range and we're only going to warm up from here so we expect plenty of sunshine today across the coast and inland uh, mountains and deserts are expecting the breeze year of conditions with that wind advisory, but the wind advisory really extends through the majority of the county, uh, but we do see the highest wind gusts over much of the mountain and foothill region. 
especially going into between about now and your afternoon about noon beyond noon and into two o'clock when we see this expire. We do see things slowly calm down, so improvements are made, uh, but it's going to be slow and steady throughout your afternoon, so gusty winds can still be expected by the time the sun goes down and in some isolated pocketed areas and then going into about tomorrow. We aren't really seeing wind as a concern. Winds pick up again for your Saturday, unfortunately, but here's what we have uh, for the San Diego County region. I want to give you a little bit of a wider look showing you just how expansive this wind advisory is. It expands all the way up through Orange County, LA County, uh, Santa Barbara County, everywhere in tan on your screen. Going to be seeing a windy day ahead. The view outside as the sun comes up shows plenty of sunshine is expected. We've got a warming trend all the way through your weekend. A brief onshore flow coming in for Saturday with some fog possible. Then it looks like we'll warm up again into next week. Jenny